after the fantastic financial flop of the 1973 entry-level Lamborghini Uraco, which was later on restyled as the 1976 Silhouette, Lamborghini on the new Swiss owner since 1980s with the Mimran brothers decided to reintroduce the silhouette for obvious economical reasons as the Lamborghini Halpa P350 GTS in 1981. After Paolo Stantani's departure, Giulio Alfredi, the head of engineer at Maserati from 1953 to 1973 was recruited and given the responsibility to mechanically update the silhouette while Bertoni would refresh its looks and build the Halpa. The underpinnings of this new bull breed named Halpa was the same, aside from an updated McPherson independent suspension and beefier ventilated brakes all around. If the transformation from the Uraco to the Silhouette had been cleverly done, thus almost suggesting a new model, the transformation from the Silhouette to the Halpa was visually more evolutionary than revolutionary. The front end, with its small pop-up headlights, had the same flavor as the Silhouette, aside from the reworked front spoiler. The flared wheel arches grew in size, but they merged more smoothly into the fenders, and as the silhouette, the Halpa had a targa roof panel, a standard that could be lodged behind the seats. As in the silhouette, the rear air scoops on the rear buttresses were smaller and finished in black, like the panel roof. The rear rectangular lights were also taken from the silhouette, and as the 80s savage and wild fashion emerged, a big rear wing a la Countach was available on the option list. At the back, the traditional Italian quad exhaust system was fitted under a rear black bumper, and to finish it all, a new set of 16-inch OZ Racing alloy wheels completed the Halpa. Inside the Halpa, a new square bar dashboard more in tune with the 80s excess style displayed a big black plastic binnacle section into cubicles where dials were deeply encased. A small center console received the same stacked up two round air vents as in the silhouette, and the gear lever exposed metal gate reassured you that you were seated in a true Italian exotic. Head of engineer, Giulio Alfredi enlarged the 90-degree quad-cam V8 created by Stanzani to 3.5 liter or 213 cubic inch. The V8 started its life as a 2.5 liter or 150 cubic inch in the Uraco, then grew to a 3 liter or 183 cubic inch in 1974. They respectively developed 220 horse and 260 horsepower for the Silhouette, who also received the 3 liter V8 in 1976. The mid-rear transfer sole 3.5 liter V8 now developed 255 horsepower at 7,000 rpm, but the torque went from 201 to 231 foot-pound of torque at 3,500 rpm, which helped to propel the Halpa to 62 miles per hour from a standstill in 6 seconds against the 6.5 seconds achieved by the Silhouette. Sadly, due to an increased weight of 595 pounds or 270 kilos, the top speed was lower than the previous model with 145 miles per hour or 234 km per hour. And while the driving position was off as usual for an Italian car of this era, the Halpa was practical and tractable in town as long as the windshield's light reflections didn't make you crash into parked cars. In 1984, the Halpa received a few updates with a color-coded Targa top roof and buttresses air intake. At the back, the rear taillights remained rectangular, but a two-round pattern brought the Halpa a little closer to the fast-selling Ferrari 308. Even with its good looks and a luxurious brand name attached to it, the Lamborghini Halpa never sold out as expected, and was pulled out of production by its new owner Chrysler in 1988 after only 410 Halpas were built. Chrysler brought Lamborghini in 1987 from the Mimran brothers and did not want to reign on the Countach's parade. So the spotlight was left to the world poster star of the 80s, the Countach. 